What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Justin Ford Podcast, where I'll be releasing life-changing principles and valuable information focused on all things faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, and so much more. Let's go! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Justin Ford Unleashed Podcast. Super excited to be with you here again today. Hopefully you've been doing great since our last episode. Super excited for another great show today. Um, If you guys are loving the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. And if you haven't yet, follow me on social media at the official Justin Ford. Again, at the official Justin Ford. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and on Twitter And uh, thank you guys so much for all the great feedback. And again, if you're loving the show, go ahead and leave us a review. Feel free to leave us a five-star review. Let us know how you guys are loving the show. Uh, But before we get into today's episode and I introduce my guests, I want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they live next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in 24 states, respected in all 50 states, and has a team of over 100 loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. Whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Com. Speaking of next door lending, <laughs> I actually have John Haddad and Sean Williams in the studio today from Next Door Lending. What's up, my brothers? Not much, All man. Right. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Jeff. So Appreciate excited to have you, John. Obviously, you've been on the show before. Excited to bring you back. Thank you, sir. Excited to be here. For those of you guys that don't know, John is the president of Next Door Lending. I also have my brother from another mother. Sean Williams in the house. Sean is the head of diversity and inclusion. He's also the head of community engagement, which I can't wait to learn more about that today. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Pleasure uh, to be here, man. Honored to have Long you. Long time coming, man. Man, me and Sean, we go way back, I yes. think, 15 plus years, man. I was going to push it closer to 20. but Closer uh, to 20. Yeah, at least 18, for yeah, sure. Yeah, at least. It's been a while. Yeah. So it's exciting to see how God is really bringing all these great things together. Oh, man, I'm super excited to be here, super excited to have the opportunity that Justin has afforded me, or I'm sorry, uh, Jonathan has afforded yeah. me with Next Door Lending. Yeah. And uh, I, like I said, I just couldn't be more grateful than what I am today. Yeah, so. well, we're going to get into a lot of that great stuff. But before uh, we talk about, Sean, all the great things that you're doing and yes. um, why uh, why you've partnered with Next Door Lending, John, let's talk about the mortgage industry. Right yeah, now. yeah, I'd love to. It's it's a wild ride, my friend. So I'll give you a look, a little quick uh, market update, and yeah. then I'm actually excited to talk about our story. And actually, the reason we're all connected yeah, absolutely. is because you know of you uh, on this here, and yeah, the reason yeah. why these relationships are even occurring and absolutely. bringing Justin on board. So uh, Sean on board. So I'd love to get into that. Yeah, so sure. uh, quick mortgage update for those of you that that follow the market or not. Um, Biggest thing that you're seeing is interest rates. So they are trying to come down. Yep. They're trying hard. And you're seeing the Federal Reserve. They're the ones who set the interest rate market for us. And they're saying, look, we don't want to raise rates uh, any higher than we've already told you we're going to do. Right. So we already know it's going up, but they don't want to raise it higher. So this data keeps coming out. The right. data specifically relating to the workforce, right? The data specifically relating to inflation. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the workforce is growing. Right. Now, their expectations were that the workforce uh, previous month were only to increase jobs by about 118,000. Right. Jobs increased by 500,000. Yeah. So it threw them off. Uh, yeah. However, they still said, okay, we're not going to go anything above that what we said. But right. recently, data came out again, said inflation actually isn't going down as much as the Federal Reserve wants it to go down. Right. So they really got to force interest rates down to keep the economy in a good place to make sure there's no bubble. I will say that I do feel like we're getting close to the tail end of it, uh, probably about four to six more months just based off what they're seeing. And then things will start to level out and you'll see interest rates start to come back down. Now, why is this important for consumers? For those of you that have grabbed home equity lines of credits or even your credit cards, 
when the Federal Reserve starts to bring rates back down towards the end of the year, those rates on your home equity lines of credit and your credit cards will also start to come down. Yeah. And for those new home buyers uh, or people that have purchased recently, mm-hmm. you also have the chance to refinance. So yeah. just keep your head down, stay super focused, yeah. give yourself four to six months, and I promise you there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's going to be wonderful and magical and these payments and everything else is going to start working in your favor. So don't say, what was me? Yeah. Just stay focused and stay positive. You know, I appreciate that because I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're in the industry, yeah. right? So like we... We are in the thick of it. You know, we understand the lingo. We understand why. But the average consumer has no clue, Mm -mm. you know, why rates go up and down. They have no clue really how inflation has anything to do with that. And I think because interest rates were so low for so long, you know, I think once once they started going up, everybody kind of panicked. Right. And the last time you were on the show with Doug, I think that's when the market was really beginning to shift. I think rates were up, you know, almost towards 8%, yep. right? They were, I think, seven and three quarters. Where, I mean, where are the rates? We're, like, we're back down into the low sixes. Low sixes, you, yeah. yeah. And on some programs, you actually get in the high fives. Right. Uh, which is which is a huge, you know, advantage. You're still borrowing money at such, you know, cheap rates. Right. I know everybody says it, but that's just the reality of it. Right. At the end of the day, there's only so much land in the world. Yeah. So for those of you that are thinking about skipping out or waiting, I, I hear what you're saying about the payments and all of that. But when the land is gone, that there's nothing else to buy. So right. don't miss out on an opportunity to own something right. and put yourself in that position simply because rates are 2% higher than what you'd like to pay. It's still low overall in the grand scheme of things. And you know what's interesting about that is, you know, when people say, oh, I'm going to wait, you know, until rates come back down again. And my initial thought is, well, you're renting at 100% interest, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You're paying 100% interest. You don't own what you're paying for. Why not, like you just said, own a piece of property and, and pay 6 7% interest? At least you own it. At least it's yeah. yours. And at least your payment is actually going towards something rather than somebody else's equity. You're so spot on. And, and the other thing, too, and, and again, like you said, it's okay. Consumers don't don't know this, right? right. So yeah. markets work. Uh, they're very cyclical. Yep. Uh, and generally, it works in 10-year increments. So yep. what I mean by that is you literally get, t- you ever heard of a bull run, right? 10-year yep. yep. bull runs. Yep. That's about Wall Street, right? And the market's taken yep. off. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with your home. So it does change. And there's a couple things that do occur um, with, with your ho- house. But usually, when you go through these markets, it's generally 12 months, maybe 18 months. It's like, look, if you can sacrifice 12 to 18 months, and then from there, you refinance, you now have an asset in your favor, right? That's what people don't get mortgages for most consumers. And I say most I'm talking about 90 plus percent of Americans. It's their biggest financial asset. Mm -hmm. So if you have the chance to get yourself into a home, I'm not saying stretch yourself thin. Now, if you can't afford it, that's a different story. But I'm saying if you have the opportunity, take advantage of it because it doesn't last long. Right. And I think one of the other things that you just said is, is so key is even if rates are higher right now, there is no, like there's so many people that came out and said, values are not going to fall, right? Values on homes are not going to fall, you know, because that was a, a last year, people were like, oh man, you know, our home value is going to fall. Is there going to be another crash? And, 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 and all the financial experts and analysts came out and said, no, there's not. So it's like, not only do you own a home and yeah, you're paying, you know, let's say a little bit higher interest rate, but you're gaining equity. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I bought my house, when Joy and I bought our house back in 2020, even back then we thought, man, did we kind of miss it? Cause I mean, for several years, the market was going up and within two years, our home increased by $200,000 in equity. And it's like, I thought I maybe missed it. Yeah. And yet my house continues to increase in value and just, just owning, like you said, owning real estate, you're building you're building wealth, right? You're building a net worth based on a property that that you own, regardless of what your interest rate is, because you can always refinance when you know the rate comes down, and 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 it's always going to be better owning versus obviously renting. I, I agree. I mean, there's no there's no other way about it, you know. And one of the things too, I, I do want to touch base on too, yeah. especially for the consumers and people that are watching, yep. is is how the actual mortgage process itself works and like sure. where these lenders and brokers are getting their money from. Yep. Um, so I just want to get through that really quickly. So for those of you that don't know, what happens is uh, there's all this money with these large hedges, right, on Wall Street, basically. I'm going to, by the way, there's so many more intricacies to this, but I'm going to put it into layman terms. But these investors, basically, what happens is they have all this money. And what they say is they go to these lenders, whether it's wholesale, retail, whatever it is, and they say, okay, look, 
here's what we're willing to pay for this, this specific product, all right? And then they give the, the rates to the lenders directly. So you have like companies like United Wholesale Mortgage, right? Mm-hmm. Or all these other broker shops. Um, and they, they, they'll they add whatever they need to make on it. So they'll add a margin to it, right. okay? And then from there, they'll give that to the either the brokers or the retail or whoever it is. And then from that point, what happens is that gets to the consumer, right? okay? So there's a lot that goes into it from an intricacy standpoint. Yep. But the one thing I always tell consumers is, like, they think I control the interest rates, okay? <laughs> right, yeah. It, it, it's, I wish I did. I, yeah. I would, and, but if I did, Justin, I love you. I wouldn't be on the podcast, <laughs> right, okay? Right, you know, yeah, I'd be exactly. somewhere in Tahiti. Uh, but yep. it doesn't come from the, the lenders directly. It comes from the investors, even a step higher. They're the ones really giving out the money and making sure that you're very well qualified. And the reason I bring that up is for those of you that are, are calling nonstop, you know, trying to figure out who's doing what X, Y, Z. I, yep. I promise you people are looking out for your best interest. Right. Really not trust people, but give people the benefit of the doubt. Rates truly are where they're at, right. but it doesn't come from the lenders directly. It really comes from those investors. Yeah. And it's so important, you know, and I appreciate you sharing that is the lender that you are working with, mm-hmm. right? You, you obviously, if you're a consumer, you know, and even a real estate agent, you want to make sure that you are partnered with the right mortgage company because especially as a as a as a, a real estate agent, you know you're handing off your client to to the to a lender if they don't have one, and you want to make sure that lender you know knows what they're doing right, has the experience to know what they're doing, and sees that deal all the way through to the closing, because especially if you're a first time home buyer, consumers don't know what we know, yeah, and they're relying completely on us, right, and so. That's what I love about next door lending and obviously why we've now been working together for almost a year is because you guys are doing some absolutely incredible things. You have over, you know, 600 five star reviews. So you guys not only are you nailing it from a, you know, a lending standpoint where you've got great products, you've got great services, you offer great, uh, you know, great value to real estate agents like myself. But you're delivering on that customer experience. And, you know, you talked about the first time home buyer, even you talked about the value and the experience. Right. And, and, you know, that's why a guy like Sean, when yep. you talk about first time home buyers, you know, first time home buyers, it's, you know, it's people, what people don't understand is how difficult and how nerve wracking it can be for first time home buyers. Right. And what some people really don't understand. And right. this is why Sean has been so unbelievable. Yeah is imagine how much harder it is for underserved communities for first time home buyers where they, their, their family haven't ever owned a home for generations Generations, and no one's there to even teach you about that kind of process. And you don't even think that's a possibility. Right. And so bringing in a guy like Sean, which I'm super excited to get into from the underserved community, it's, it's so fascinating because you do need somebody from a lending standpoint. Not only do they, uh, are they educated about the entire process, but they also need to understand who they're speaking to. A hundred percent. And that's what I love about Sean, which you bring to the table and you and I, again, we've, we've known each other for a long time. We've worked together on many other projects yes. and, and, and to be able to hear your vision for, you know, the black community, right. And being able to, you know, uh, partner with next door lending. You know, I remember when you came to the uh, lunch and learn, you yeah. know, with your wife and, you know, even when you got into mortgages, right? Because obviously, you know, you've done different things on the back end. You're also, you know, in real estate. But, you know, when you began to pursue this path of, of, of mortgages and lending, yeah. you know, you had, a, you had a vision in mind. And then when, when we had that lunch and learn at your office, John and Sean was there, like, I'm like, I got to connect these two. Yeah. Like, I just felt like, man, there's something here. And to see what it's kind of kind of become and what, where it's really going is awesome. You, sh- what does it mean, Sean, to be the head of diversity, inclusion, and community engagement? So th- that's an interesting question, um, and I get asked that question quite often. Yeah. Um, and typically my response to that question is, well, what does diversity and inclusion mean to you? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it means something different to everybody. Sure. Uh, but, but for me, it really comes down to creating opportunities, uh, equal opportunities. Equal opportunities, yep, absolutely. Um, and, and then also, too, you know, understanding the difference between equality versus equity. Right. Okay? Yep. Because uh, there's a difference, there right? A difference, and, yeah. and, and a lot of people don't understand that. And I think, you know, a lot of the work that, that you know, that I'm doing, or sh- actually we're doing yeah. uh, together, because it really takes a team. It does. Uh, to do the things that, that, that you know, we're, we're doing right now. So... Um, but, you know, my thought process is, is really, you know, helping people understand the difference between equality versus equity. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, you know, you, you know, in some cases you have uh, an individual who um, is, you know, everyone's looking for, for or searching for equal rights, right? right absolutely. But you know, a, a white person versus you know giving a white person versus a black person the same opportunity is still not might not be enough right. for them to reach that same target. Yeah. So I think that you know, uh, in some cases, you know, certain demographics may need a little bit more help, right? Yeah. And that's where the equity piece comes in yeah. because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to achieve home ownership. A hundred percent. So, yeah. And when you look at, and I, I remember, cause I used to have an office in Detroit and yeah. I was working in Detroit and I remember, and I think the, the statistics are getting better, but at one point, I believe 80% of the people that lived in Detroit were, were renters. renters. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And think about that from a generational standpoint, yeah. right? Like yep. think about it, you know, in the sense that, you know, th these, these disenfranchised communities aren't able to take advantage of, you know, being able to refinance your home right. and pull money out and invest in business and invest, in, and invest yeah. into their community. Yeah. Right. Um, literally I know families, um, not just in the black community, but right. in the Hispanic community Hispanic and other community, communities, yeah. you yeah, have other a, a community yeah. of, of, of refuge of, of immigrants that are yep. coming into this country. Yep. You know, that's highly concentrated in the Dearborn area that yep. I've had opportunities to speak with. Yep. Um, you know, you're talking about generational renters, right? Right. Um, you know, individuals that have never owned homes. Yeah. You know, so when you talk about, you know, uh, the wealth gap that's in this country, which is, huge, you know, yeah. you, you never really get to address that. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, there, there, there aren't afforded equal opportunities right. to, to, to own a home. And that's, and I appreciate you sharing that because the reality is so true. And I think, you know, we hear the term in, you know, our industry, equal opportunity lender or equal opportunity rights and all this. But the reality is not everybody has equal opportunities or they, they may, but they don't know how. Right. right? Absolutely. And the Bible says people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Absolutely. Right. Or people yeah. perish for the lack of knowledge. And a lot of times because people don't know how yeah. it never happens, yeah, right? People absolutely. don't know where to start. Yeah. And if those opportunities aren't available if, or if there are not doors open yeah. to be able to make that connection, yeah. then it, then the cycle continues. Absolutely. And it's the patience too. You know, I, the, one of the things that you've done such an incredible job at is, is the educational portion of it, you know, and the way you explain it and articulate, it makes so much sense. And, and the way I love to tell people is like this, you know, Imagine, uh, and, and this is regardless to me, right? Diversity and inclusion is everybody, right? Including, uh, you know, everybody yeah, from that standpoint yeah. too, right? And I know you talk about that all the time, but yeah. imagine you have a, a, a family where they know they bought in 15 houses, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're growing up as a kid, you've seen the process, your, your mom or your dad talks to you about that process, yep. right? Now there's another family yep. where they've never done that. Now they're still, they're still equal, right? right. They're still equal, but... Right. Not from that standpoint, because they have a massive head start because right. their family's talking about buying mortgages. Yep. Then yep. you have this other family where they've rented for 40 years in right. the family. Yep. Yep. How is that kid, all right, that child yep. that's growing up, supposed to learn about being a first-time home buyer when he's never seen yep. his family be a first-time home buyer? Right. And right? I, I'll, make, I'll even give you a personal story yeah. uh, just to kind of piggyback off what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I have a friend of mine. He was actually, uh, I, had, I had two best men in my wedding. And uh, one of those individuals, you know, his mom... Single mom, they rented pretty much their whole lives. Okay, right. yep. now he 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 lives in California. He's making a high six figure income, and he's still renting. Mm. He can't even fathom the idea of buying a home. Right. He sends money back to his mother who lives here in Michigan and pays her rent too. So again, they they've never really been able to kind of mm. grasp the concept of, of being an owner of being a homeowner and the wow. benefits of, of such. You know. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a generational thing. Yeah. You know? So I, I'd love for you to talk about what your vision is and what sure. you're doing to create a solution. Absolutely. Because right? that's what this is all about, Absolutely. right? Is mm -hmm. being able yeah. to go create a solution to give people this opportunity. Can, I, talk can I say one thing before you jump oh, into please. it? Because Absolutely. I want to place the context for the viewers here. All right. So yeah. when, when Sean, the way this all happened, he went to the lunch and learn. I wasn't at that lunch and learn. I was out of town. Yep. And then I came back and you and one of my other guys, Derek, was like, you, you just have to meet this guy. It's like, tell yep. me about him. Yep. He's, he goes, I'm not telling you about him. Just meet him. <laughs> yeah, you got to meet him. And he says, your guys' energy will match. I'm like, okay, whatever. So he puts me and Sean into my office, like literally the small room yeah. in the back. And Sean and I, I think like our first 
first meeting, we're getting emotional and teary eyed. And it was a crazy yeah. story. And I'm like, what just happened? You yeah. know? Um, and then Sean starts telling me about all his connections and all the people that he knows. And he's yep. like, I know so-and-so this. So usually, usually when you hear that, yep. you think, okay, part of it's probably true. Yep. Okay. And then yep. the other part, I'm sure it's fluffed, you yep. know, whatever. Yep. Well, no, it, none of it was fluff. Right, like this right. guy comes in the door, he starts at the company. And when he says, no, he knows people. No, no, he knows people. <laughs> like, and these people know him and yeah. they're there for him. Yep. Yeah. And it was one of the most like, it's so inspiring. I get goosebumps even saying it yeah. because you've st- you made those connections for so long. And now, you know, I always tell people this. It's like when you when you put deposits into somebody, yeah. then you can ask for withdrawals later. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can't ask for a withdrawal from somebody if you've never deposited. True. Right. Yeah. So, so and it's like the bank. Right. Yeah. If you're not depositing money, you can't withdraw money. Right. Same thing with relationships. But yeah. this guy over the last 25 plus years in your journey, yeah. you know, you've been making deposits and now you're making withdraws and it's unbelievable to watch it come together so yeah. please go ahead talk about what you're doing because yeah. it is so incredible no listen i mean it, and it's exciting you know to, to be in a place where you know you've made these relationships over you know the last 20 plus years yep. and you know people they know you as a person of integrity yep. they trust you mm-hmm. and you know when when you have camaraderie and trust yeah i mean you can do some great things absolutely you know so um, super excited about the things that we're doing at Next Door Lending. Yeah. Uh, to kind of dive into a little bit about, uh, well, one of the, the initiatives that we started at Next Door Lending, uh, something that I'm super excited about, it's called the Love Thy Neighbor Project. Okay. Mm. Um, so, you know, with this particular project, I had to kind of put my marketing hat on. Um, yeah. As, you know, uh, Jonathan mentioned, uh, been in sales and marketing for over uh, 20 plus years. Yep. And, um, Talk about your background real quick. You worked for the Pistons. I did. Yeah, yeah. I did. Um, Had your uh, work, own company doing marketing. Absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. So I, I worked for the uh, Detroit Pistons yeah. uh, for about three and a half years. Did some uh, big things did there. Some amazing uh, things there um, uh, during my time there. I actually uh, created one of the biggest uh, 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 ticket programs uh, that existed uh, at that particular time. Um, so super proud of the work that I did. Go Pistons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, from there, uh, I started a marketing company uh, where I primarily focused on uh, healthcare yep. uh, companies and working with uh, schools. Schools, yep. So I uh, did that for a while. And, uh, you know, just to kind of, you know, dive in, as we, we talked about before yep. this podcast, uh, I remember being in, in um, a, a transitional time. And, you know, Justin and I, I mean, look, we go back, you know, 20 plus years. Yep. And, and uh, you know, one thing I can say about you, you're not just a friend. Justin is someone that I consider to be a brother. And I remember going through some 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 dark times uh, personally. And Justin Ford uh, was that guy that literally called and checked on me every single day. You know, so uh, like I said, I can't thank you enough, Justin, for your contribution that you made in my oh, life, man. man. It's so, an honor, bro. No, absolutely. So I feel the same way. But um, going back to, uh, you know, the thing that I'm most excited about, it is the Love Thy Neighbor Project. And yeah. our goal essentially was to, you know, um, to, it, it's twofold. One, it was to raise, uh, you know, $1.5 million is our goal. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, and that, that money is, is going to be raised to uh, go towards down payment assistance uh, and also uh, credit repair. Yeah. Right. So because those are some of the, some of the main barriers that actually prevent underserved communities from actually, yep. you know, obtaining uh, the dream of home, on, on, of home on ownership. Right. Yep. So, um but the goal is 300 families, 300 loans, 300 homes. Wow, okay. I love that. And, um, you know, we're partnering with, uh, you know, other nonprofit organizations that are going to help uh, lead this cause. Um, and uh, like I said, I just couldn't be more excited about uh, the work that we're doing. Uh, yeah. A lot of it is, is, is you know, we're kind of in the infancy stages, yep. a lot of grassroots stuff that we're yeah. doing. But what's amazing to me is just, you know, the amount of traction that we've been able to get. Yeah. We're working with some politicians and, yep. and they're saying, hey, look, we want to help you raise uh, these funds. Yep. Uh, so, and I like, you know, you know, put this out there. If there's anyone that, that has a passion for, um, you know, helping, uh, you know, underserved communities and they want to get involved, you know, please reach out to next door lending yeah, for sure. uh, to be part of, uh, you know, this, this, this journey that we're on. I love it. So, but yeah, but it's the love thy neighbor project, uh, which is one of the initiatives, yeah. uh, the diversity inclusion initiatives that we're working on at, uh, next door lending. And uh, like I said, you know, I, c- I couldn't be more excited to be doing this work. I actually come to work and it doesn't even feel like work. I feel like I'm making a difference, you know. And if you really think about, you know, what we're doing, um, you know, and, and what happens when you actually help somebody get into a home. Man. Like, you're not just helping them get a home. You're changing their life. And generations to come. Absolutely. I mean, think about that for a second. I mean, it's you know. huge. 
you know, just by helping someone get a home, yeah. you know, you address poverty. Yep. You address mm-hmm. the generational yep. wealth gap. Yep. Okay. You know, just, you know, you, you had brought up the scripture, um, you know, earlier. Um, people perish for the lack of knowledge. For the, people perish for the lack of knowledge. But it also says when you, when you, you know, that um, wealth and riches shall be in my house. Yep. Okay. Yeah, owning a house is spiritual. It's, it's, it's a whole spiritual, spiritual di- dynamic or yep. whatever. So, yep. so, you know, we can't even be in, in, in our communities, in these underserved communities, they can't even begin to build wealth mm-hmm. until they own until a house. They own a house. Well, period. Okay. Period. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. Yep. You got to have a house. Have to. That's the starting point. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, you know, and, and I'm so proud and just excited to be part of a company that, that, that understands that vision and, and, you know, not just from the leadership, but, you know, even down to the, to the loan officers, right. you know, they don't come to work. They come, they come to change lives. Amen. And I think that that's, you know, what, what consumers are feeling when they work with next door lending oh, yeah. is that these people are completely engaged in, in helping them uh, get to a better place. So, and not only do, um, you know, customers feel that way. I feel that way, mm-hmm. right. As an agent, I feel that way. And that's honestly, you know, when, when I first met, met you, John, and, and Doug in Next Door Lending, I already had a great loan officer lender relationship, yeah. and I had no plans on switching, right? Zero. But when we met that night at that, uh, you know, at that uh, panel that, that we did, uh, there were, I knew there was something different, and I needed to connect and find out what it was. Mm. And the reason that I made the switch is because I know this is so much bigger than just real estate. This is so much bigger than me sending you a, a buyer and you sending me a lead. This is this is like you said, this is changing lives. And this is a mission that that goes so much more beyond than just uh, helping people get a house. Absolutely. It's about changing lives. Because as a as a real estate agent, I can go to anybody and help them get into yeah. a house. But most people are just doing it to get them into a house without really the understanding of how this is making an impact for, for not only this person, but for, but for people to come. Absolutely. You're so spot on, man. You know, and it's so funny because on the broker, I've been 10 years of doing it, right? Yep. But broker side, I've been for about three and a half. Yep. And people always ask me, they're like, hey, how'd you get in front of like Justin Ford and all these other really big agents? And you know what I tell them? And they never believe me. I'm like, because when I talk to them, it's never about real estate. Right. I said it's about growth and their vision and their future. Right. Because that's the kind of conversations we have. Right. Yeah. And they always look at me funny, like, what do you mean? Like, what about loans? And I'm like, Justin Ford's long term vision is is not loans. And re- you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Like his that's not what defines him as a human being. <laughs> right. And they can't like grasp yeah. it sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like, you just don't get it. Like yeah. when, when I talk to him, if it's about like the future and oh, where yeah. we're going and where right. we're headed and yep. how we can help be, be a facilitator, a conduit, somebody right. that helps propel yeah. you forward and right. in turn propel us forward. Yeah. yeah. And it, it is a hard concept for me to like teach sometimes and yeah. you get it because you and I are our conversations yeah. are so much deeper. Yeah, right. And you and I too like <clears throat> you know the other day we, I sent you this long email because of stuff you and I are working on. Right. And after I sent the email I literally look at Holly my you know my admin and I'm like wow we're doing a lot of stuff with Justin that's yeah. outside of just doing real estate. Right. So it's I'm so not, fascinating and yeah. amazing and that's where you come in so well and really help propel us and move us forward especially in the underserved communities. You know you talked about John you, I know you want to help, but you not you you don't know where to look. Yeah. And yeah. when you said that to me, it really hit me because you're right. I do want to help, but but I'm not like in that community, you know, every single day right. to find those opportunities to where where can we go to help? And now you've just yeah. shifted us and put us in the position to where we are able to help, and we're in the places we're supposed yeah. to be. And, and it's funny, real quick too, you know, and and this really speaks to you know the character and who you are, Jonathan. Why I'm so excited to be partner with you. Um, I, I joke with Jonathan, you know, and I've said this many times, and, you know, in, in order for Jonathan to be more passionate about these communities, I mean, he'd have to be black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Like, like, like literally, I mean, he, and again, you know, we're not just about the African-American community. I mean, we're, we're literally everything, trying, Latino, yeah, everything, yeah, everyone. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Um, but, uh, but I, what I can say about Jonathan is that, um, you know, when I came to him and, t- and shared with him, you know, what I was looking to do, uh, you know, Jonathan's like. I'm there, and I could see it in his eyes that that he was serious about 100%. making a difference, yep. right? Absolutely. And and what I can say, even to this day, he keeps showing up every single every meeting. I, I even brought this out uh, to some of our guests yesterday. Every single meeting yep. that that I've I've set up, and, and I said, John, this is important. You know, I'm not even certain if he even understood the to- the totality of what I was trying to bring into fruition. Yeah, but 
you know, I, I need you to take this meeting. Jonathan's, I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. I'm 100%. there. And Jonathan has this this way of kind of connecting the dots that uh, is is really remarkable. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and the dots have just been connecting. Things have been gelling. And uh, like I said, you know, we're going somewhere. And, you know, you and I were talking the other night, Sean, and I said, you know, it's amazing how God, because we've had, you know, you and I have been working oh, together yeah. on many facets, but and the vision's always been the same. But for, for us is, you know, to be able to see how, like right now, like you were saying the other day, man, like you're just seeing things flow and happen yeah. in a way that you know God's in it. Because when, 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 when God's in it and you're where you're supposed to be and it's like that season, right? Yeah. You, you just start to see things happen. And I always say everything leading up to that was the preparation yeah. to get to, to this place. And so yeah. I love that. Now, obviously, you know, you're, you're talking, you know, uh, about what you're doing to serve communities. You're talking about how to do that through home lending, but you're also working on a project with real estate agents. Do you yes, want to talk about absolutely. that? Because, because, yeah. because you can only reach so many people in the community. Jonathan can only reach so many people on the lending side, but there's a lot of agents out there who probably, maybe they are not leading an initiative, but they're thinking the way that you're thinking Absolutely. and they're looking for a way like, how can I be a part of something so much bigger yeah. to create the solution? Talk about what you're doing on that side. So um, one of the, the, the second initiative that I started uh, when I came to Nextdoor Lending um, it, it's, it's called the minority Asian exposure events. And, yeah. and, and we did our, it was kind of a, a test, a test pilot run. Yep. Uh, we did last month and it was amazing. Uh, we had about 15 real estate agents and basically that's what we did is we just, you know, invited them to be part of a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, I know, you know, Justin, uh, but I'm, but I'm a licensed real estate agent as yep. well. Okay. Yep. And there's some things that I've experienced being an African American real estate agent right. that our counterparts, you know, don't, don't encounter. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, you, we talk about the, the wealth gap, um, you know, in connection with underserved communities. Well, let's talk about how that, that works in real estate. Right. Okay. You know, if I were to ask, you know, this question, you know, you know, who's the, who is, or do you know who the top African American uh, real estate e real estate agent in this region is? Who would you say? Yeah, me, me as in general. Yeah, yeah. Who like like yeah? If I were to ask you the question, who is the who is the top African American real estate agent in this region? I don't know exactly. Yeah. And guess what? You know what's sad about that is most African American real estate agents they don't know either. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what we've done through this minority agent exposure event is, is we're we're kind of shrinking that 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 really real estate community amongst minorities. Right. Okay. And so what I did was I, I invited them to a conversation, okay? Yeah. You know, and one of the questions that we asked in that conversation was, you know, what can we do right. as minority real estate agents to grow our business in this current marketplace? Right. Okay. I love because that. Because at the end of the day, we recognize that it's different for us. Right. Okay. Um, you know, if I were to say, you know, and, and I even ask this question, I, I, I use you as an example and I would love to have you come. Oh, you I'm know, already there. You know, You've <laughs> got to tell me when I'm you know, there. Speak to the group, oh, whatever. Absolutely. But I asked the question, I said, where's the African American version of Mark Z? Right. Doesn't exist. Right. Where's the African American version of Jeff Glover, of a Jeff Glover, right. Of a Justin Ford. And I right. did use your name, yeah. you know, in, in the conversation yeah. and you know, for the most part, it doesn't exist. Right. Okay. Uh, not in this region, you know, by, by any means. Now, now, when you're talking about, you know, different parts of the country, uh, you know, what we refer to as some of the chocolate cities, uh, Atlanta, uh, D.C., Philly, uh, Philly, Dallas, L.A., um, Chicago. Yeah. So you might you, you might find that. But in large, you're not going to find that. And when you know, it's it's it, and here's the thing. It's it's not that it doesn't exist. It's it's not nobody knows. Correct. You know what I mean? Yep. And that's the yep. thing because there's a lot of successful minority real estate agents out mm -hmm. there, right? There's a lot of successful black real estate agents out there. But what I what I love what you said is if if most people don't know why exactly. is that? Exactly. And, and that's you know? kind of what we did is you know we brought some some you know minority agents into yep. this meeting that are experiencing some success. Yeah. And then they were able to share some of their best practices. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. You know. I, I ran into a real estate agent uh, at a lunch and learn one time, mm -hmm. and I was sharing with her about an initiative uh, that I, you know was, I was st uh, starting about a year ago. It's called 100 Black Agents, right? Yep. yep. And basically, you know that this it, 
you know, the goal is through 100 black agents is to get 100 African American agents in each state. Yeah. Um, ultimately. Yeah. Uh, but obviously starting here local. And again, just the network, connect and build. Right. Okay, share best practices um, and resources. Right. And uh, as I was handing her uh, my business card. Yeah. Uh, she she in return handed me her business card. But she made a statement when she handed me her business card. After she said, you know, Sean, I would love to be a part of an organization like that. She says to me, and this is why I don't put my face on my business card. Mm. Okay, now, mm. what's understood doesn't need to be explained. I know why she doesn't want to put her face on her business card. Right. Okay. But, you know, be, why? Because she's afraid that she's going to not have opportunities because people are going are gonna to see that she's black before right. she, she's professional. Right. Okay. Um, so my thought process is, okay, well... I understand why you're doing that, but is that something that you should be doing? Mm. So we were, to, we were able to have that conversation yeah, and share some of those best practices. And one of the things that came out of, you know, that conversation was that, hey, look, you know, if, if you're a real estate agent, what, what business is for you is going to be for you. And you should be confident. Mm. And you should you should present your confidence, right. you know, in your presentation. You know, make sure that you have a good, high quality professional picture, yeah. and post that thing. You yeah. know, so that was some of the feedback that came back. Yeah. You know, um, because again, you know, a lot of these minority agents are struggling. Yeah. You know, right now, you know, yeah. especially in this current market where interest rates are high, and uh, you know, yep. <laughs> in the current state that we're in in yeah. this country. So yeah, and and I love I love what what you're saying, Sean, because I think a lot of times people. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's 2000 and, you know, 23, does this really still exist? I yeah. mean, and I think people outside of the, you know, uh, the minority community don't really understand, right? I know, you know, like for me, you know, some of my very best friends are black. I'm married to a Mexican Filipino, right? <laughs> my kids are mixed. You know, my, my daughter, you know, married an African American. My grandson yep. is partially African American. So I'm very... You know, connected, connected to, into the absolutely. to the minority community, but yet for me, you know, being connected to you, being yeah. connected to Kimosh, who's yeah. our best friend of mine, I've even had to really understand because my thing is like, hey, you're a great guy. I love yeah, Sean. He's successful. Yeah, right. Like, why would anybody not give him the same opportunity as me? Yeah, and yet I've never been through what you've gone through. Yeah, I've never had to question if I should put my face on a card. Yeah. I've never walked into a meeting or an, uh, an appointment and ever had to worry about, yeah. am I being judged based on my skin color? And so to me, I don't even want to say it was an ignorance, but it was me, I think maybe just being, you know, who I am always being positive <laughs> yeah. and all that, that no, nah, man, like, Hey, I, I'd hire this guy in a heartbeat. Why right. wouldn't anybody else? But, but the reality is that, racism and all of these things still exist yeah. regardless of, of, you know, even on the lending side, you see like, I think uh, bank of America or a lender recently, you know, got hit with steering or redlining or whatever yeah, it is. And, million it's dollars, like, yeah. and this is real stuff. And mm -hmm. you would think in 2023, this is still going on. Like, and that's crazy. Yeah. It's the, you know what it is too. Uh, one of the ways that you're able to do it is the, the way you articulate it too. Cause that conversation that you had with that agent with her, yeah. I agree with you big time on that conversation, right? Yeah. Cause you're going to get with you, but coming from you yeah. versus coming potentially from a Justin Ford, yeah. right? Or, so it's like, it, cause if, if maybe I say it some way different, yeah. it's like, Oh, like they're not, they don't want to listen. Right. Cause you yeah. don't know Jonathan, you don't know Jonathan. Right. right but a guy like Jonathan. Sean yeah. who can guide you and say, listen, I hear what you're saying, but here's my belief system. Yeah. And then you start educating and changing yep. mindsets and then and you take it, it a step yeah. further. Yep. And it's that constant perspective, you yeah. know, ju he, you're so good at keeping perspective. Even for me, I've learned so much stuff that even I don't worry about, you right. know? And he's like, it's not that it's a worry. It's more so that like a mis not a misunderstanding, just not understanding in general yeah. of a certain situation. Yeah. And to bring that to light and the way you communicate and articulate it is, is so incredible because I've seen you when you speak to these agents, you know, yeah. I see their face go, oh, because they're, they're listening. They're yeah. listening to yeah. you because you yeah. have that you have that about yeah. you, and you're able to do it that way. Well, I appreciate that, Jonathan. And, and, and I think, you know, you know, when I look at what we're doing, I think one of the most powerful things that we're doing, yeah. you know, that in, in reality, I don't know any mortgage company that's doing what we're doing right now. No. Nope. But at the end of the day, it's real simple. Right. We're just having a conversation. That's we've it. opened up our door. We've opened up our home. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. And we've invited 
you know, uh, agents of color in yeah. to have a conversation. Right. Okay. The, the other thing that that's r- real interesting about what we did, you know, last month with this minority agent exposure event that we did. Um, I, I kid you not. I, I, I cold called real estate agents. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I probably called about 20 agents. Yeah. And this is no lie or no cap as these young people say. Yeah, right? No cap. Okay. No <laughs> cap, right? Okay. Um, Every single real estate agent that I cold called uh, wanted to be at that meeting. Wow! Now, out of the twenty I called, fourteen showed up. Wow! The other, the other four or five called me, said, "Oh my God, I can't believe I missed it. When's the next one?" Wow! Okay, why is this happening? Okay, because no one else is having the conversation. Mm. Right. And Next Door Lending has decided we're going to have the conversation. I love it. Jonathan, Doug, and yep. Nader, the yep. you know the leaders of our organization, said, "Hey, yep. listen, you know we're going to hire somebody." That 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 you know understands this world and knows how to navigate it, yep. and you know let's support him and let's have the conversation. I love it. They're not afraid to have a conversation. I I, I do want to say one yeah, thing absolutely. too about uh, yeah. the, the bro. So for those of you that do are listening, this is real data that yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. This yeah. is legit. This is real. So on average, uh, we we are a mortgage broker, so we basically get wholesale pricing, and then we add. I was telling you earlier, you know, you add margins yep. to make money, whatever. So. Yep. On average, a mortgage broker versus a retail shop, so your large, large banks, your large corporations, this is factual. This is from Hemda directly. You can look it up. Mortgage brokers save consumers on average $9,400 over the life of the loan. Mortgage brokers save minorities, minorities over $10,000 over the life of the loan. Wow. By working with a mortgage broker. Wow. Because we're more patient, we have more products, and we have different opportunities. Yeah. That is a fact. There's This came from the government directly. Right, this right. is a government entity. Yep. This yeah. has nothing to do with third-party data. This is from Hemda directly. So wow. keep that in mind for those of you out there when you're thinking about making a decision. When you walk into these big corporations right. and you can't get to the top, the top of that corporation, can you call that CEO? Right. Can you call that president? Right. Can you talk to their head of diversity and inclusion right. when you walk through that door? Right. Ask yourself that question. If the answer is no... You got to go ahead, and I'm being serious here. You got to check yourself because right. if you really want to grow and help educate yourself, right. you got to be able to get to the top, yeah. right? And yeah. when you walk into a company, the top is right here. Right. There he is. Yeah. I'm right here. Yep. So ask yourself that question. And I and I love that because I was going to see where that passion is. No, yeah, it. sorry. No, no. <laughs> hey, you never have to apologize. And what I love about what you guys are saying yeah. is, is I know you both. Yeah. And it's authentic and real. Mm-hmm. Like oh, this yeah. isn't staged. This yeah. isn't made up. This there's no propaganda behind this. Yeah, it's really all about making a change yeah. and bringing transformation. Uh, two things before we wrap up. Number one is this: I think as you're bringing minorities together for these meetings, yeah. and I know you want to bring me in as well. I, as you were saying that, eventually, you need to bring you know um, non minorities and and begin mixing them together mm. to have conversation. Justin. Listen, okay, hold on, listen, let me tell you what happened. Okay. Yeah. So you can see, this is like, you know, and this for your viewing audience, you just got to be in here to kind of just, you know, yeah. see and just feel the energy that's in this room right now. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. We are so lock and step yep. like you wouldn't believe. So let me yep. tell you what happened Yeah. because I did exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I don't know, no, no, matter of fact, I don't know if I shared this with you or not, but basically what happened was, um, we, we, we Imagine being in a room, okay, and it's, it's pretty Favot. much yeah, Favot. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the story with, with Chris Favot, yeah. one of our uh, loan officers. Shout out to Chris Favot. Yeah, he's doing a great job there next yep. door. So, um, so what I did was I had these uh, agents in, and I'll be honest with you, I was a little hesitant at right. first. Yeah, and I, I kind of had to like you know just <laughs> meditate and pray on it a little bit. Yep. Um, okay, how do I orchestrate this? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I invited. Chris Favot, okay, who is uh, one of our, uh, our our top loan officers mm-hmm. at Next Door Lending, yep, okay, into the conversation, mm-hmm. and I had a conversation with you know with him prior prior to coming into the meeting, right? Mm-hmm. Now let me first let me first say this, okay, one, Chris is just an amazing guy in and of himself, okay. I've had an opportunity to to connect with him and uh, just a fantastic gentleman, right? So I said, Chris, I said, hey, listen, I want to invite you into this meeting, um, and I I really just want you to listen. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, you might hear some things that you may have not heard before, but at the end of the day, you know, you might even hear some things that you might disagree with. But right. at the end of the day, just show, you know, some empathy. Yep. Okay, that's really, you know, that's all it. minorities yep. Yep. are really looking for. Yep. You don't have to agree with everything, 
but you know, try to sympathize. Yeah, sympathize. You know, okay. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't understand, yep. try to sympathize. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Chris, um, so we started the conversation and, and one of the things that we said in the conversation, you know, everyone began to share stories on how they feel race has played a role with them being a real estate agent. Right. Mm -hmm. And I started out by sharing my personal story as a real estate agent. Right. I remember being in Taylor. Okay. Yep. I was waiting for a client to get there so I could show them the house. Okay. Yep. Um, and as I'm, as I'm sitting in, in the driveway, uh, the next door neighbor comes out. He's looking at me, just eyeballing me. He's got a cigarette in his mouth and just watch me the whole time. Mm -hmm. Then if, uh, about 20 minutes later, uh, a, a police officer shows up. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're asking me questions. And then by the time the, you know, I was so rattled by the time the client, the, shows, the client up. shows up, I'm just like, <clears throat> you know, go look at the house. You know, I was completely rattled. Right. And needless to say, you know, they didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't do a good job because I'm, I'm rattled by the whole police situation. And, right. and granted, they let me go. I get, you know, they were doing their job, but why did that have to happen to me? Yeah. Are they going to, would that same neighbor have called the police if I was sitting right in the car you know what I mean? Right, exactly. You know, so so bringing this thing uh, full circle, I share my personal experience. Then all the other agents started sharing their their personal experience on how race has played a role right. with them being uh, real estate agents, right? right yeah. How it's affected their business, right? Yep. Um, at the end of the meeting, I turned to Chris, and Chris was the only non minority in the room, right? And uh, I said, Chris, you've been listening, and Chris says, I said, I said, what do you think about what you've heard? He says, honestly, and he was shaking. He said, I'm pissed. He's like, like, I, you know, I, I didn't know. I, I know, you know, we live in a country and, you know, you hear about racial inequality, you know, all the but time. You don't, but you don't know unless you're said, experiencing or connected to it. Yes. Know? And I think in that moment, he connected at a much deeper level, you know, to the, you know, the, the, the cause and mm -hmm. and he, I could tell and just in some conversations that we had you know afterwards he's like you know whatever I can do yeah you know to make a difference I'm gonna do it I at a much it. higher level I you know when it. I'm on the phone with minority you know applicants you know there's gonna be another level of compassion that's there that. that wasn't there before I right love that. and at the end of the day you know you know and this is why I love what we're doing is because one we we've we've taken a step in boldness to say hey look we're going to have the conversation right right first right yep. then we're going to start inviting others to the conversation ha part of have the conversation to. to be a fly on the wall yep. if nothing else yep be part of the conversation but then i see it being like how can we how how can minorities and non-minorities come together to create the solution together where there's no you know political stance there's no you know it's it's all from the standpoint of how can we work together to create a solution not i'm a republican you're a democrat you're black i'm white yeah. pro trump pro biden yeah. like that stuff creates division so and much that's the division. problem right yeah but how can we all work together for like you just said equality because even from a spiritual standpoint right we, we're all believers here at this table and the bible says god created us in his image we're all created in his image yeah. black and like here we are white Black, Middle Eastern, right? We're sitting yeah. at the table working together, right? And there's so much love in this room, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, you feel and, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know what? So if you're listening right now, um, and for those that are listening, if, if let's say it's a consumer, right? Obviously, you know, I'm going to share here in a minute, if you're listening, how if, if you're looking to buy your, your next home or you're looking to refinance, how you can get a hold of next door lending. But if there's another, let's say, loan officer or a real estate agent, you know, that says, you know what? I'm interested in learning more about this cause. Sean, how can they get a hold of you, man? They can call Next Door Lending. Yeah. Um, but like I said, they can also reach me directly. And, yeah. and, and if it's okay, and I, yeah, I share give your my information, number. Uh, you can reach me at 248-285-0027. I'd be happy to talk to you about all the diversity and inclusion initiatives that we're currently working on. Yep. And some of the ones that uh, we're going to be embarking on, mm -hmm. you know, in the next quarter. So. Um, what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, next door lending is doing things that no other mortgage right. company in some ways would even dare to do. Right. Uh, and it's definitely a, te a testament uh, to the, the individuals that uh, are in leadership uh, yep. that has, uh, you know, allowed us to, to kind of do the things that we're doing right now. So and, super and, excited. And I love it because what I see is, is this is going to start here in, in the Detroit area, and this is going to spread all over the country. Oh, man. All over the country. Oh, man. <laughs> oh we have a plan. And, Absolutely. And, 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 and I'm excited to be a part of that. Absolutely. I really am. Yeah. And so this has been good. 
Thank you, we're Justin. Gonna to, we're going to have to have you guys back in. Yeah, we'd love to be back. I got more going. I'm not going to lie. My brain's firing right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. This is real good. Uh, Sean, I want to I wanna uh, end with a question to you. Yeah. For those that are listening, you know, again, whether they're a minority, a non-minority, whether they're in mortgages or real estate, what's one thing that they can do today to, to, to be the solution? In, in some way, shape, or form, you know, and, and maybe even, I'll, I'll say this, if they're a non-minority, okay? Okay. How can, what can people do today? Again, maybe they're, maybe they're in the business, maybe yeah. they're not, maybe they're just a listener. Yeah. What's a piece of advice that you could give somebody who, this conversation has just opened them up to a new understanding? Yeah. What, what can they do? I'll make it real simple. Yeah. Just listen. Yeah. Just listen. Yeah. You don't have to agree with everything mm. that's that you know. You know, but what's 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 not understood, you know, it's hard to explain. Mm. But what's understood doesn't need to be explained. Mm. Uh, but just listen. Yeah. You know, try to try to empathize. Yep. Um, you know, when when you think about historically the things that have happened in this country. Um, and you know there there are communities of people, not just the black community, but there are communities of, p- of people, many different communities, yeah, that are trying to you know make America, you know, come to America to live to live a dream and right? have a, and have an even level playing field. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And and you know there are reasons, you know that you know we don't have enough time to go into now, uh, <laughs> but uh, just at the end of the day, just listen. Yeah, just listen. You know, find someone. Um, you know, that doesn't look like you and just listen to them. Yeah. Right. So, um, that would be my advice. And then I want to add a step two to that. And yeah. it goes back to what your program's called. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Listen yes. and then love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Yeah. That's it. Love Absolutely. It. That's it. So Thank man, you, it's Justin. been so good to have you guys on the show. Absolutely. Thank We're going to do so it again. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank love you. Love what you guys are doing. And like I said, I'm honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Guys, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, this was just an incredible episode. We'd love to hear from you. If, again, if, if you're interested in learning more about this this initiative, if you want to connect with Sean and Jonathan over at Nextdoor Lending, uh, then I'm going to give you their information here uh, in just a second to give them a call. And share this episode. Share this episode. Get this information out because we need to stop getting caught up in the political aspect of of all of this and we need to do exactly what sean said is find someone who's not like you and just listen and then choose to love right if we can lead with love and 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 jesus said it best right love love covers a multitude of sins right love is the is the answer and if we'll just choose to love people then there's no reason to hate somebody. There's no reason to not like somebody because they look different uh, or they talk different or love, love changes everything. Yeah. And, and I love uh, this episode. This has been such a phenomenal, phenomenal episode. And I do want to remind you that this episode was brought to you by <laughs> next door <laughs> lending. And, and there's a reason why you guys can, can see and hear why this is my lender. And I'm proud to say next door lending is my lender this is who I personally send all of my clients to because this is bigger than just a mortgage transaction. This is about changing lives. And so if you're interested in working with next or lending, whether it be on the mortgage side, if you're looking to purchase a home or, you know, refinance a home, I want you to reach out to next or lending. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking uh, for an incredible lender that stands for much more than you just sending off a buyer, then I want you to reach out to Nextdoor Lending. This is my lending team, and I'm proud to say that this is my lending team. I want you to give them a call at 888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Again, guys, thanks for tuning in today. If you haven't followed me yet, you can at the official Justin Ford. Subscribe here on my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. You can reach me as an, if you want to reach out via email, justin at justinfordunleashed.com. And as I end every show, there's two things that I always want to leave with you. Number one, it's not how you start. What matters is how you finish. And number two, with God all things are possible. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.